When these brothers unexpectedly found an abandoned shed on their new property, they were stunned. And when they opened it, they immediately screamed and called the police. What they discovered was simply shocking. The structure stood out to them obscurely. The brothers hadn't seen anything like this on the plans when they had bought the property. They looked at each other hesitantly. They had rushed into this purchase out of excitement, but what if they'd missed something important? After all, a whole shed wasn't easy to miss, and yet this was the first time they saw it. The truth was that Henry and Tom Stevenson had always dreamed of building their own home. When they came across an online auction for a large piece of land on the outskirts of their town, they saw an opportunity they couldn't pass up. The land was being sold for a fraction of its value, and despite their initial skepticism, they decided to take the plunge. It was everything they had been looking for. The land seemed to be in pristine condition, ideal for what they had in mind for their home. Little did they realize the secrets that the land owned. Their brothers were close, having grown up working together on various projects. Their shared passion for construction and design made them the perfect team for this new adventure. They had every intention of building a classic farmstead home where they could raise their kids one day or even open up as a bed and breakfast for people passing through. They had a myriad of ideas in their heads but had only ever really seen the property on paper. They knew where it was roughly but they were keen to put their feet on the ground and really see what they were going to be working with. So, on that beautiful autumn day, they had driven out to their newly purchased property. The excitement that buzzed between them was simply palpable. The drive was filled with animated discussions about their plans for the land. This is going to be amazing, Henry said, his eyes shining with anticipation. I can't wait to see what we got to work with, Tom replied, gripping the steering wheel a little tighter as they approached the property. As they arrived at the gate, they stepped out of the car and took in the vast expanse of land before them. It was rough terrain, overgrown with weeds and dotted with trees, but the potential was evident. This is going to need a lot of work, Tom remarked, his eyes scanning the landscape. We knew that going in, but at that price, we really can't complain, Henry replied. Let's take a look around. They took some unsteady steps through the overgrown terrain. Henry walked straight ahead while Tom decided to veer to the right. There was a large tree that towered over the overgrown grass and cast a massive shadow on the land behind it. Squinting through the sun's glare, Tom was sure he could see something lurking in the shadow that wasn't so clear. Moving closer, he began to realize that it was a structure. A whole shed, in fact. Calling Henry over, Tom pointed out the strange structure to his brother with apprehension. He was just as confused when he noticed the shed. Together, they quickly began to move towards it. The old rusty shed hadn't appeared on the map they received after the purchase. The possibilities that it could hold could be spectacular or very scary. Either way, they were very intrigued. As they got closer, they began to realize just how big the shed was. The tree was doing a very good job obscuring the shed from the road. Any passerby that might have looked in would have never seen it. The curiosity was eating at the young men's minds. Tom took the lead and walked straight up to the two large doors to see if they would open. Do you see another way in? The main doors seem to be locked tightly, he asked, tugging at the heavy chain lock connecting the two large doors. They couldn't help but wonder at the fact that the real estate agent had never mentioned the structure. It seemed to be well protected for something that was left to degrade. Trying to help his brother, Henry walked around the shed looking for another entrance. When he couldn't find one, he picked up a steel pipe lying in some rubble and shoved it between the chains. They were about to break into the shed, but it was theirs after all. After a few attempts, they heard the satisfying sound of the chain breaking. It crumbled to the floor in a rusty mess, leaving behind the two unconnected doors. Without the chain, the doors began to move on their own, moving awkwardly on their rusted hinges. As the doors creaked open, a musty smell wafted out. To any sane person, this may have been a bit worrisome, but the brothers were just too excited to see what their shed held. Their minds were racing. Would they find old forgotten tools, or maybe some storage units that still held some ancient family relics? In some way, they felt like the TV stars they often watched discovering old vintage items. It was too dark to see anything inside, so Henry and Tom used their flashlights to illuminate the interior. The beams of light immediately lit the room up. The horrendous amount of dust unearthed from the open doors floated very evidently through the light beams. They threw the light around the room, trying to get a holistic picture of what was inside. 
and suddenly they screamed in horror as a flurry of movement caught their eyes. A flock of very irritated bats took flight at once, rushing towards them. The brothers ducked, covering their heads and kept screaming until all the bats had left. When they finally found the courage to get up, they were unsure whether to laugh at their reaction or forever lock the shed doors. The encounter with the bats had been frightening to say the least, but they decided to keep investigating, hoping there weren't other terrifying creatures lurking around in the shadows. The light revealed multiple large boxes in the corner of the shed, some with smaller locks similar to the one in the door. This just seemed mysterious to the men. Who would have left chained boxes abandoned? Surely, if there were valuables, they would have been stolen by now? The boxes were old, but the intricate details on them made them look too important to be left to rot. They were engraved with beautiful designs. Their faded navy blue and deep red tones seemed to scream wealth. They definitely did not match the state of the shed around them, that was for sure. The locks on these boxes were not quite as strong as the others, so thankfully just a little tugging helped them pop open. Before opening them, the young brothers looked at each other and took a deep breath. Opening the boxes revealed a collection of documents, a complex-looking blueprint, and photographs of a man and his family. It was quite a peculiar find, considering where it was stored. This was sentimental stuff, not the kind of thing people left in an old shed. Looking at the pictures, Tom couldn't help but feel a sense of familiarity. Did he know the man? Based on his attire, it seemed he was far too old for that to be true, and yet something about him screamed familiarity. Brushing it off, he turned to his brother, wondering what he thought. These must have belonged to the original owner, Henry speculated, examining the items. The blueprint was filled with perfectly straight lines and detailed drawings, clearly the work of a meticulous hand. One detail stood out, the initials RS encased in an upside-down triangle. Something about this seems familiar, Henry said, staring at the initials. This just reinforced what Tom had been feeling. But it was impossible. How could they know this man? Realizing they had stumbled upon something significant, they knew that they needed to contact the police. Maybe there was something here that another person was looking for. Surely they would know about the previous owner. The police arrived half an hour later, curious as to what the issue might be, and were just as surprised to see the shed when the brothers showed them. They too had failed to notice it, even though they had driven past the land many times. When Tom showed the officers around, they were also so surprised to see rich-looking boxes in such a dilapidated structure. When they showed them the documents, one of the officers said he would take them back to the station as evidence and see what they could find out. Whilst the brothers were grateful, they felt impatient. The whole situation seemed so mysterious to them, they struggled to sleep that night. They were eager to find out more about their find, so they did the only thing they thought they could. They decided to visit the local library. Perhaps there would be more information on the mysterious RS. However, after hours of searching, they came up empty-handed. This just made them even more frustrated. How could some documents that were clearly so old not be featured in any archives? They felt even more angry when they found out that the police's search had proven fruitless too. The only thing they were able to find out was that the land hadn't changed ownership in a very long time, and that the previous owner's records were sealed. At this, the poor brothers really felt at a loss. Surely it shouldn't be so hard to find out who the previous owner was? So they did the only other thing they could think of. They placed an ad in the regional newspaper asking for information on who the previous owner was and if the documents were related in some way to them. Then they waited. Days turned into weeks, and still they heard nothing. They wanted to start building on the property, but they couldn't until they knew who the shed belonged to and what else it contained. Just as they were about to give up hope, early one morning the phone in Tom's house rang. I saw your ad, the voice on the other end said. I'm a historian and I believe I can help you. The brothers met with the historian, an elderly man named Mr. Whitaker, who had brought along a wealth of information. He explained that the initials R.S. belonged to Robert Stevenson, the original owner of the land and a prominent figure in the town's history. Robert Stevenson was the wealthiest man in town, possibly even in the entire region back in the 19th century, Mr. Whitaker explained. He was known for his grand architectural projects and meticulous attention to detail. Henry and Tom were stunned. Stevenson, that's our last name, Henry said in awe. The whole time their suspicion of the man looking familiar had been right. 
Mr. Whitaker examined the blueprint they had found in the shed. This matches one of the blueprints I have in my collection, he said, pulling out a large sheet of paper. But there's a difference. My blueprint is missing a room. The brothers looked at the historian's blueprint and compared it to theirs. It was clear that the missing room was where the shed now stood. After Robert Stevenson's death, all traces of his life seemed to have vanished. My guess is that this secret room might have something to do with it, Mr. Whitaker suggested. With renewed determination, the brothers approached the shed. They now saw it in a whole new light. What secrets did it hold? They stomped on the ground, trying to find any sign of a hollow space. Henry, come over here. I think there's something beneath us, Tom called out. What they found was simply shocking. They cleared the dirt, revealing a wooden hatch. With a mixture of excitement and trepidation, they lifted the hatch, exposing a dark hole with a ladder leading down. They found an old oil lamp hanging on the wall, and to their surprise it still worked. The light from the lamp revealed a well-organized living room, not the musty old basement they had expected. Antique furniture was meticulously placed, and a large oil painting of Robert Stevenson and his family hung on the wall. This matched the distinguished nature of the boxes they had found. This is incredible, Henry whispered, his eyes wide with wonder. As they examined the painting, Henry noticed a loose corner of fabric. Looking at each other, they wondered whether there was anything behind it. Surely this wasn't like the movies they had watched as kids. But it was tempting enough that Tom took a deep breath and tugged gently at the fabric. Sure enough, it began to peel easily away from the painting's frame, revealing the most interesting thing behind it. Beneath the old canvas fabric, he found an old key and a letter sealed with wax bearing the upside-down triangle. They both began to quiver with excitement. It really began to feel like they were in an adventure movie. They didn't know what to expect, but slowly opened the sealed letter to see what it said inside. What they found was simply thrilling. If you find this secret room in my letter, you are direct descendant of my bloodline. With this, you are entitled to all my family's riches. This key will help you unlock all of my wealth, Henry read aloud. The brothers used the key to open a hidden compartment, revealing piles of gold and silver coins. They were speechless, overwhelmed by the magnitude of their discovery. The realization that they were direct descendants of Robert Stevenson and inheritors of his wealth left them in awe. The fact that they had inadvertently found their way back to their ancestors' roots also made them real. What a crazy coincidence this had turned out to be. We need to call the cops, Tom said, his voice shaking. We have to report this. As they waited for the police to arrive once again, the brothers couldn't help but marvel at their fortune. They knew their lives were about to change forever. The arrival of the police brought a new wave of tension. Officers swarmed the property, examining the shed and the treasures within. The brothers explained how they had found the hidden room in the letter from Robert Stevenson. The police were initially skeptical, but the presence of the historian and the documentation they had found lent credibility to their story. The treasures were catalogued and taken for further examination, while the brothers were hailed as local heroes. With the wealth they had inherited, Henry and Tom set about rebuilding the family home using the detailed blueprints left by Robert Stevenson. The project took two years, during which they meticulously followed the original plans, honoring their ancestors' legacy. The restored house became a symbol of their family's history and a testament to their dedication. They even recreated the secret room, preserving it as a tribute to the incredible journey they had undertaken. Also, a symbol of remembrance for their ancestor who had left them everything. The historian, Mr. Whitaker, helped the brothers trace their family tree, confirming their connection to Robert Stevenson. The story of their discovery became a local legend, inspiring others to explore their own histories and uncover the hidden stories of their ancestors. The fact that they had lived just across town from the land that was rightfully there seemed crazy. They were grateful that the universe had found a way to bring it back to them. Henry and Tom's lives were forever changed by the abandoned shed and the treasures it contained. They found not only wealth, but a deeper understanding of their heritage and a newfound sense of purpose. They felt extremely grateful that they had taken the chance on the property, as they sensed it was all meant to be. What an incredible story of fate! How would you have felt about discovering the shed? Would you have investigated further? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time.